If you're converting to Airtable from another software, then you don't want to miss out on this video. I'm going to be going into detail about how you can import data from your current or previous system and get it uploaded nicely and easily into your Airtable database. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help businesses to get organized and automated using databases like Airtable and automated processes like Zapier. So before we go any further, if that's of interest to you, definitely subscribe to this channel and check out the different free resources that we've put together to help you get up to speed quickly. All right, with that being said, let's just jump into this video. So taking a look at my screen here, you'll see that we've got a really simple, straightforward database. Now, all we're looking at here is the following. We've got a full name, which is going to be a formula that bases off of first name and last name. And then, of course, we have those two fields. And you'll see I've got a couple of different dates here, and I'm going to go into detail about why these are important in just a moment. But before I get to that, just know that this is, of course, very high level. And I would expect that a normal import would have a lot more information than this. This is kind of bare bones just to showcase what we're going to be doing here. So taking that as it is, let's go ahead and talk about what these dates are. So I'm going to add in a, just a fake record here and you're going to see that certain things automatically get filled out and that is by design. Now what we've created here and these three fields are required in order to get this to work. We've got a date of import that is the date that the data came over. So the reason that this is valuable is let's say you've got an, another system and you got contact information in that system two years ago. When you create your Airtable database, Airtable doesn't know when you came up with that other stuff because it lived in a different software. So if you don't bring over an import date field like this, you're never going to know when that contact information first came to be unless you build something like this. Now, of course, we can track the created date inside of Airtable. So the date that I'm recording this is 1125. And so, of course, our created date is showing that. So this field right here, the created date with an asterisk, this is metadata so that as we create a new record, that record is getting time stamped with the date and time that it's being created. And so if you want to use a created date, that's great. And I would strongly recommend it because it's one less data point for you to enter every time you're bringing in data. But if you're going to use a mix of imported data and then new data, you're going to need to have an import date and a created date with an overriding formula that tells you which one to use in which case. So imagine we brought in an import of a lot of old stuff, maybe from two years ago. Let's say this was actually started on 11 25 2017. So if we pick that date, then you're going to see that the created date, once we give Airtable a moment to think, uh, is going to change to that. And so what we've done here is this is an import date that takes a date field. This is a created date, which takes the metadata of the record. And then we're telling Airtable to actually use this date. And this date is a simple formula that says if there is an import date, then use the import date right? Because that's going to take precedence. Now, if there isn't one, then use the created date. So this is an important step. Anytime you're doing some sort of importing of data and you want to make sure that you get the original timestamp of creation, make sure to add these extra layers into your database so that you get that uh, functionality. Okay. So now for the, 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 you know, the guts of this, how do we actually import data? Let's take a look. I'm going to delete this old one or rather this record and let's go ahead and bring in an import now you've got a couple of options you can do copy and paste in a large block so if you've got a CSV file or uh, which is comma separated value or some other file like that maybe in Excel or something you can take that data copy it all and just paste it in here so long as you've matched up your columns correctly now that's a big if now the other thing you can do which I honestly prefer is to use the import block and that's what we're going to be showing off here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a block. Now, of course, this requires the pro plan. That's an important thing to note. And I'm going to add the import block here. So I'm going to do a quick sort. And here it is. It's called the CSV import. Go ahead and bring that in. And you're going to see that I can just drop a CSV into here and get going. So I'm going to minimize this and grab this CSV that I saved. 
and just drop it in here. Now, if you're already using some other software and you're looking to get this uh, set up, it's very easy in almost every software to go ahead and create a downloadable CSV of your data. So now that we've got this dropped in, let's go ahead and go uh, start with the mapping process. So we need to tell it if we have a row of headers. Now in this case, let me actually minimize this and go back into my CSV. I'm going to open up the CSV for us to look at. You're going to see all it has is first names and last names in two columns. There are no headers on here or anything else. And so for that purpose, I don't need to worry about uh, merging with existing records or first row of headers. So here's the CSV that we're looking at. There are no headers here, but if this said, if this had, you know, like column names, then I would tell it, I would tell Airtable that yes, there is, uh, there are headers on this document. Also, if you're merging with existing records, meaning you have some data in your database already and you don't want duplicate copies, merge with existing records and let Airtable know, hey, don't create a duplicate copy if, if one already exists. All right, again, not part of this example, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip out on that. You'll see we've just got these eight different names, both first and last names that we're bringing in. So let me go ahead and close this document out and we're gonna finish up in Airtable. So I need to bring in those dates, first name. And so once I click this, then I have to tell it what column is that inside of our database. Now, if we had headers, then it would bring in the header here. Now, of course we don't, so I'm just gonna say first name's in column one, last name is in column two. Now, import date, as you might remember from our example, is the date of, well, the date that we originally had this data. And so we don't have anything in our CSV that correlates to this so we don't need to map to this field. And that's it. We're gonna go ahead and save these records and you'll see just like that, all of that data was added here into Airtable. Now, a couple of, couple of things to note here. We have a created date, which is time stamped with the time that we imported this in. And if we had a date that originally was uh, associated with all of these records, we could overwrite it. So again, if we look at that 2017 example, let's say, the first three records actually came from uh, the same day two years ago, then we can just put that in, and then because of the formula we have here, we have a uh, created date formula that's bringing in the actual date, whether it came in from an import or is actually timestamped with this date, which means that moving forward, any new data that we add to this, so long as we don't go in and put an import date in, all new data is gonna actually get timestamped with the actual created date. And that's how we're gonna save ourselves some steps. So I realize we went pretty quickly in here, but this is definitely showcasing the power of the CSV import block and also gets you working around with the ability to use a created date, but then also override it if you need to. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site. So swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.